Hello Wargamers, it's me Cam from Tabletop Banter and in today's video I'm going to go over my experiences of um, Warhammer 40k 8th edition so far. Um, so it's something slightly different today, obviously you're used to seeing heresy type videos but this is more of a wider discussion um, and not really me focusing on 8th edition as a form of content going forward. So it's kind of a one-off video that I just wanted to make um, and it was all sparked off by seeing some of the stuff from the London GT. Um, in particular the 40k tournament, not the narrative part, but the tournament part. Um, and that sort of made me think a bit about my experiences of 8th edition. Now that it's almost been a year, I think. Um, and so I want to go back to the very beginning <clears throat> and sort of work my way through and, and tell you how it, I've uh, how my experience has changed since the start. So Right at the start, when they announced the new, a new edition of 40k, I was really excited. Um, there was a lot of naysaying and, do, uh, and sort of doomsday related stuff, and there were loads of people really excited as well. So it was a real mix in the community, and I think um, I think a lot of people have sort of swung towards it now. Um, now, before it came out, I basically I saved up. Some of my student loan uh, put it towards going all in on the uh, the starter set and grabbing a couple of the oh or an index as well. So I really went in and was so ready to play this game. Now bought the starter set and sort of built up bits of it over the summer. Painted up the uh, marine half and sold all the Nurgle stuff and started sort of you know. Um, I, mean, I was, did my Crimson Fist, Harry and I did that 24 hour charity stream in which I basically used that as an opportunity to paint them all um, and the handful of games I played at that point they were kind of fun small skirmish games um, in the infancy of, of 8th edition uh, and yeah like I said they were enjoyable um, it was painted stuff it was, I love small scale games um, and it fits that pretty well. Uh, it was just infantry, it was basically my half the starter set and then Harry bought some um, Chaos Space Marine stuff and we, we had a good a good laugh playing some games. Um, after that I think I picked up a couple more games in total in my uh, in the last year I played I think about six or seven games of 8th edition. Um, I played a game at the friendly local with my Deathwing um, in fact, I played two games of that. I played, was it three or four with the um, Crimson Fist when I had those, and then also the um, oh come on, oh I played Harry with my um, Word Bearers playing Chaos basically. Um, and from the start to the finish, my opinion of the game deteriorated. So I went from this one one place of being really excited for a new edition. Um, to now not touching it with a barge pole and a series of things set that off the first thing was indexes now I loved the idea of the index I thought okay you buy all the indexes you've got rules for the next six or seven months then they'll start bringing stuff out once the game state has settled down a bit wrong the indexes lasted about two months uh, people who bought all in on them uh, basically wasted their money because there were so many codices coming out, or codexes, coming out so quickly one after the other. The release schedule was mental. And what it did was it meant that indexes were suddenly became null void. Um, and that to me was mistake number one. Um, the shelf life of the index was fucking abysmal. Uh, don't get me wrong, there are still armies that play out of it, but not many anymore. Um, and... The, obviously the ones I was interested in got turned around pretty quick, so that kind of killed my enthusiasm for that. Um, that was that was the big that was the start of where I thought where I saw the demise of my interest in 40k um, was that rapid release of codices right after all the indexes have been published. Um, going forward from that was this classic GW power creep. Um, where new codices that were coming out were better than the previous one with this new game breaking rule and there was this huge difference between indexes and codexes um, an issue that probably would not have been the same had they hung on to the indices for longer um, and so we saw this classic power creep this 
Vast reduction in points costs, meaning that a 2,000 point game, which people regard as maybe a norm, was costing you more money. Classic, again, classic GW um, mechanism. And I've done nothing against that per se, but it was just the way in which it was implemented that I disagreed with. Um, so there was that. So there was this rapid release of indices and then this, this power creep. Um, and then we came to something that only really caught my eye in the last handful of months. That's these soup lists, which I, I hate so much. I hate soup lists. There's no theme in a soup list that, that you see nine times out of ten. Don't get me wrong. There is nothing. So let's say you're playing Ultramarines with a little unit of custodes or something like that, because again, that would be fairly thematic. You can imagine that Gilliman has access to the Golden Boys, right? But when you have, and this was my example that just totally killed 40k, like any resurgence I wanted to have in it, was when someone played a list and it was 2,000 points. It had a tiny guard unit ally system. I think it was the patrol or something, where it's got like one HQ, one troop or something like that. It had the bare minimum. It had the platoon commander, and he was the warlord over about 1,500 points of Space Wolves and 500 points worth of um, Death Watch. So you're telling me a platoon commander in the Imperial Guard has command over the chapter masters of, you know, the chapter masters or captains or literally any Astartes. I mean, that was absolute dog shit, and it was because. On a 5 plus, I steal your command points, and on a 5 plus, I get mine back. And it all became very unthematic. Um, this can be seen when you scale the game up as well. So, like I said, small skirmish infantry only game, fine. Tanks in the game, fucking stupid. The fact that my right front track can fire all of the LAS cannons on the Land Raider is dumb. I get they did it to streamline it and simplify it, but they took. 100% of the immersion away from using vehicles. Now, yeah, you could say, well, just house rule it, but there's only so many things you can house rule, um, and it just, it, I think, is absolutely absurd the way that that mechanic in the game works. Giving them a toughness value seems pretty smart to me. Um, it allows a, a quicker flow of the game, having them deteriorate as they take more damage i quite like that mechanic i don't know if it would work in heresy but i like the mechanic but telling me that the last cannon on the right sponson can see from the back left exhaust pipe is bullshit um and that killed it for me because to me the hobby is all about that immersion setting yourself in the game being the general of the armies getting down at eye level looking at line of sight being like oh this is really cool you know my my space marines are marching towards this um, this chaos fortified corner, and um, oh look, four of the five guys can see, and oh well, you know the tanks had to swing wide, so only one guy, one weapon can see that way, or something like that, and it just ruined that for me, and it was like the final nail in the coffin um, for my interest in eighth edition. Um, yeah, like I say, vehicles ruined it for me. Uh, I would probably play. Small power level skirmish games, so 500, oh, I'll say 500 points. Well, I, I suppose what I really means like, like 20 power. I don't know. That's just put a pluck from the fucking sky. But that and around that mark only infantry, because otherwise it kills any level of immersion I have to the game. Terrain doesn't work um, at all. I think it's ridiculous. Uh, um, and I think that's even widely regarded as the case in the community that enjoy the game system. Um, so yeah, those are those are kind of what those are the things that took my level of excitement from. I want to delve fully into this edition and buy all the Primaris stuff and get really invested, build up a Crimson Fist army. To I don't want to touch this game with a ten foot barge pole. And I know that sounds silly, as it can be such a rapid decline, but it was these things happening one after another. Uh, now, I still watch battle reports now and again, because I like seeing armies on the table, but I won't watch it if it's not thematic. So, as soon as I see some classic 40k 8th ed bullshit come up, like a, at a platoon commander leading an Astartes force, or, you know, the fucking tank sitting corner fire from edge, as soon as I see that, the bat rep is gone. I don't watch it anymore. I have zero interest in it at all. Um, anything that kills any level of immersion, I'm just not down for. 
Now, the latest two things that made me laugh and made me realise that I'm so glad the heresy is the way it is, is first thing, Mortarian's base shenanigans. So people are saying like, oh, monsters can't jump up on different levels, so you can't charge. And then someone laid Mortarian on his back, so the base was pointing upwards and was within an inch. Like, that is fucking horrendous. Can you not see how that just totally kills the game? Um, I would just honestly talk to my opponent and say, look, can we just say they're within an inch because it's obvious he can reach? Yes. That's how a gentleman's agreement works. At events, at tournaments, people lying Mortarian on their back and saying, well, you know, he's now within an inch, so it's okay. Like, oh my giddy aunt. That totally just, I thought, wow. Wow. Um, now, don't get me wrong. There were shenanigans in 7th Ed. Yeah, there were. I mean, anyone who says otherwise is, is lying through their teeth. But that level of bullshit is exclusive to 8th edition. Um, the last point I wanted to make, another immersion killer, is the style of games that are played. Now, this isn't every game, but this is what you see on the internet the most. And those are those win-at-all-costs, immersion free games um encapsulated by the um london gt table setup i'm only going to touch on this briefly because um i'm sure i could probably make a whole video ranting about terrain um but for those of you who haven't seen the pictures it was a shambles um unpainted foam core blocks in corners and being like wow this is good enough for a 50 quid ticket 40 for the event 10 for the the um gt as a whole um it was ridiculous honestly looking at that again made me so grateful that i've got these amazing heresy events that i can attend you would never see anything remotely like that at a heresy event that is run and sold at that price level this isn't a £10 friendly local gaming store kind of like all chip in for a, a box of models sort of event. This is like a grand tournament. Like, I, I honestly couldn't believe it. Um, and the fact that... No, okay, there's been a large backlash. Many people have seemed pretty pissed off. Now, I'd like to also reiterate, this is only the tournament side, not the narrative or 30k side, because actually they've... I think they're being spearheaded by the greetings from the warp guys and their terrain is great and the events they run particularly heresy events are widely acclaimed as very good um in fact they had goose the last school stars aggression recently and that went down a treat with every, pretty much everyone who went that i know of um so props to them for saving what could have been an absolutely diabolical weekend for a lot of people but um the the 40k competitive element, they fucked it. <laughs> they basically, every table was the same. Every table had shitly painted terrain, if painted at all, if primed at all. Um, and for that to be at a grand tournament level is a joke. Uh, people were travelling from Europe to play at this event. And I feel genuinely embarrassed for the people who ran that of that particular portion of the event because I cannot imagine travelling to another country to play on a table like that. Um, I mean, like, you take, for example, the boys in Gibraltar at SM Battle Reports. Whilst I'm not super keen on the competitive element, at least their tables are nice. Like, their tables are stunning, and people travel there because they've got... They've got that, okay, first of all, there is a reputation of being a classy event, but the table quality is really good. Um, so, yeah, people travel abroad for that, but people traveling abroad for the worst table setup I've ever seen in my life is a joke. Um, so it's that being not widely regarded as okay, but even the principle that someone thought that that was going to be okay and that being linked into that classic 8th edition sort of win it all cost nature that the game seems to nurture is uh, just another another nail in the coffin. Like, this coffin's looking pretty metallic right now, I'll be honest. Uh, from the top down, it is entirely rimmed with nails. Um, and it put into perspective how lucky I am that I have the heresy 
and I have the gaming community around that, which doesn't stand for bullshit playing of games and bullshit terrain. It's all about creating a good game between two players. Um, me personally, I don't give a hoot if I win or lose a game as long as my opponent and I had a good time and we had a bit of a laugh, bit of a chin wag, and at the end of the day, shook hands and I've made a new friend. Or, you know, I've met someone else in the hobby and it's a positive experience. Um, to quote someone from the 40k scene, when asked if he and his opponent had had a good game, he says, I don't care because I've won. Like, that to me is ridiculous. That kind of, I would say selfish, but it's, you'll get more out of a game if you both enjoy it. Right, because then you get that that banter, that that back and forth, that nail biting finale, or the the jokes. Like the number of times my Ash and Circle have dropped down and done sweet fuck all, has been numerous. But that doesn't stop me having fun with the unit, playing it the way I want to play it. And okay, some like one or two times they've actually done okay. But just because it's a bad unit and I'm losing the game because of it doesn't mean I can't make a light of the situation and have fun um i don't think the success of a game is based upon winning and losing um now obviously like i say that's because i'm wired the heresy way you could say that kind of more thematic i'll say narrative loosely because not every game i play is huge is written to a story but when i say narrative i more mean casual thematic and nothing that would majorly contradict the canon of the of the setting. Um, and I'm wired that way, and that works for me. Um, that's not to say competitive gaming on the whole is bad. It's just how it's managed and how it's how it's sold. Like it is bad when you're paying money, you're paying fifty quid for an event that doesn't have terrain. Um, someone mentioned that they were making twenty two grand off ticket sales. It was about fourteen thousand pounds to rent the event hall which puts them at an eight grand profit and if you're telling me that the terrain on that table was eight grand's worth of terrain then i think someone needs to go back and do some remedial maths because that is a joke <laughs> so um anyway ran over um on a more positive note um i'm enjoying the heresy so <laughs> Uh, I've got a couple of events coming up over the summer. I think Harry and I are going to try and do a video log on a couple of those. Um, namely the Tarsis... Um, oh, bollocks. Betrayal at Modgud Prime. Um, which is this super cool 3k event run by the Geno52 boys. Um, they know how to run a proper event with a good terrain standard. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, so the Ashen Circle are getting paid up for that. 30 Ashen Circle is the core of the list. Uh, a Knight Asher on as well. And I'm, we'll probably do some building hobby logs along the way. But also we're going to talk about lists. And of course, I've coined this phrase now. Hashtag two turn Tarsis. Um, not in the tabling my opponent kind of way. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll get some stuff out for that. If not, apologies. But that's, that's the plan. Um, and that's about it for this video really. So thanks for listening to me ramble. I probably appreciate most of you stopped after I started swearing about 8th edition quite a bit. But... I think it's really interesting to note how, I've, how I went from that level of excitement where I went out and bought the starter set and the index and got very excited for the game. Did a whole day's worth of stuff with Mike from Corangelis Illicis about the game and then all of a sudden a handful of decisions made by GW and the local and the gaming community at large has killed any enthusiasm I had for the game. Um, so it's interesting to see how that can happen. Um, and if, of course, if you've experienced similar things, leave those comments in the description below or the, the section below. Um, I would be interested to see if anyone else has had a similar experience. Um, like I say, it's not like I've not played the game. Um, I don't like to comment on things that I've not experienced. But just shy of 10 games is probably enough for me to know that it's not a game for me. Um, and these recent um, events... Not like the events as the actual event, but you know what I mean. The recent turn of events surrounding um, 40k 8th Ed has just, like I say, killed it for me. And I'd be interested to see if anyone else is feeling slightly more um, 
tepid about it you know like they've come off the boil um regardless i'm starting to ramble on an outro which i didn't really think was possible but apparently it is so thanks ever so much for watching guys um stay tuned for the next video hopefully have another kill team one coming up soon um it depends on editing and stuff unfortunately i'm right in the middle of exams Woo. um so i'm busy busy but hopefully like i say we'll have something up in the near future and uh, that's it for now so thanks for listening and uh hope to catch you next time bye for now